I can create a product where I can introduce you to the heat level, so the mild, the medium, and then a hot, to raise your, your heat level and your tolerance level, so you like using it all the time. Another reason, I think, is because if you go to the market and you look at the shelf space, there's limited shelf space. So with the small bottles, you have less competition with hot sauces on the shelf as you do compared to uh, marinades, barbecue sauces, and salad dressings. There's just way more competition. There's like 50 different salad dressings, 50 different marinades, 50 different barbecue sauces. And those are all single-use products. Mine is a multi-use product. It's kept out on the table. You get branding all the time. You have less shipping costs, less storage costs. And it's easier because you can have multiple areas inside of the store to sell your products with less competition um, and a higher profit margin. Uh, typically, a marinade goes for two or three dollars. You get ten to twelve ounces. Mine's a five ounce bottle, and it goes for five dollars. So we have a higher profit margin, uh, less storage, less travel expenses, less uh, transportation costs. So with all those items together, we have. Uh, a smaller footprint in the store shelf, more places to post the product in the store. We have a higher profit margin, and we also have a food additive that's an FDA over-the-counter active ingredient that we're introducing into people's foods and their diets. So it's an actually addictive uh, food product that we're selling. So you have repeat customers, and as the product grows, uh, the appetite grows for the customer for different ways to use the product. So my ask is, I need to do a first production run. Um, in those production runs, I need a kitchen rental, uh, fresh ingredients for local peppers and contract rows, dry ingredient supplier, glass, label, insurance, some food science, nutrition panels from Chico State, business license, distribution expenses to get it out to the stores, uh, show, and market fees and do. And that will be about $5,000 to get things up and running to do the first production run. So that's going to pay, and hopefully that will get everything together on the first production run. So my ask is $5,000 from the community. Uh, we can do pre-order sales, like a Kickstarter, until we get there, and then we can kick everything into production. I also need help finding a local kitchen with production equipment. I need local companies for printing labels and materials, uh, local growers and ingredients, and help with my online digital Website. So my name is Tim Sharkey and this is California Sauce Company. Thank you very much for your time. Question and answer now. Oh, me? All right. Uh, so I've been watching uh, repeats of this uh, recipe rehab. They, they do like, they take a tamale thing or a deep fried choco thing and then they, they show how fatty it is. So then they have these two chefs compete to make it like not going to kill you like after you eat a plate. <laughs> so do you have a, a recipe guy maybe or something like that? Because it seems like habanero sauce isn't like common thing. Well, we have, thing. we have three different uh, sauces. We have our garlic, key lime, habanero, and that's the hottest of the three. As the hottest, we use that base product, and that's what gets added to each of the different types of cooking sauce. So the chipotle habanero is more of a barbecue sauce base, sweet and smoky. And then we have uh, the citrus ginger, which that's an orange pineapple juice base with lots of ginger. And it's more of a marinade type, Asian style, stir fry, finished sauce. So with each of those different products, you have like the marinating side, salad dressing, you have the barbecue grilling, and then you have the heat just to add for food. And with each of those, there's recipes that I have uh, accumulated. So it shows you different ways to use the product. And with that, so having a juice base and low sodium, uh, natural ingredients, it's easier to incorporate into different recipes, just like you would use uh, natural pepper in the kitchen. You don't always have a fresh pepper, but you always have some California sauce company sitting in a refrigerator. I have a friend that has a certified organic kitchen locally. And, um, I would appreciate it. I don't know what his rental fees are or what he's doing. Um, pretty sure he's had other people come through and prepare food. So I'll talk to him. And that's one of the items with some of the local kitchens. 
Um, you can go in and rent the kitchen out, but typically that's for use of after hours, between like 10 at night and 3 or 4 in the morning. So you have to pack everything in, do all your stuff, uh, make everything, clean everything up, and pack it back out. So it would be nice to find a commercial facility that has a little bit of storage, a place to keep your things, and you can do production as you need it instead of loading and unloading. Because that starts getting into your, your time, your effort, and your profitability starts going down the hill. So I would be very interested to see what they have. Yes? Are you familiar with the commercial kitchen now, Dominic? Yes. Okay. I have uh, talked to them in the past. Them? I've talked to them in the past. Uh, I haven't been there since the new people have taken over. I think the candy companies in there now. Uh, yeah, Ron Van Dusen. Yes. yes. I think he uh, is a counselor at uh, Small Business Development Center. He was like, uh, we're running it when I last talked to him, but that was probably more than a year ago. Um, yeah, her, her company is, is uh, Terry's Because 
like I said, my boyfriend loved your your sauces, and I would constantly not try it because I I can't even have salsa on my burrito because I'm such a wimp. So like, yeah, I can see that being. But I can see, like I said, also this was like when I saw the new name, I was like, oh my god, it's smart, smart call. And it's it's something that I wanted to do. Um, but you're right, having habanero right on the first being a part of the company name, um, it automatically limits your crowd because. One, they don't know what a habanero is most of the time, and two, if you do know what it is, you know it's extremely hot. So, uh, there's also other, there's chipotle in the other one. We use a few different other peppers as well, but um, opening it up to California Sauce Company gives me more room to play with different flavors of sauces, different types of sauces, and not only have a table sauce, that's what this, these sauces are more of a table sauce, kind of like an A1 or something like that where you use on your food. But then we can go into salad dressing sauces and marinades you know, and do larger production bottles um, and change the recipe. Yes? I apologize, I do proofreading for a living, so it's what happens. Please, I do need that. Yes, that thing says California, there's an artist. Oh, uh, your URL. I, I figured that was a typo and I went to the oh. correct thing. So, oh, okay. in the future, you might be. I put this all together <laughs> between yesterday afternoon and this morning. Okay. Well, at least it wasn't your logo. <laughs> yeah, right. Good. I figured it out. <laughs> so there's... Um, well, I like to know MSG thing on the site. That's, that's something that... Correct. If you, since uh, these things, if you're going to have an Asian component to it, the no MSG is just a marketing thing. To talk about. Starting off with the habanero, um, was a distinct choice because I just like the flavor and the brightness and the, the distinct flavor of the habanero. And we use a habanero puree. Most companies use a habanero mash. And most of the mashes come from South America and Belize. And when they produce those mashes in those local regional areas, you get that regional flavor. So we're using uh, the local salt, the local peppers, uh, the, the community, just, just the location where it's at. And as a mash, it ferments and gives it a different flavor and um, characteristic. When you use a fresh puree, you get a bright, open flavor, and the heat is a little bit quicker to um, affect you. It's not like a slower burn with some of the, the hot and mashes. It gives a really unique uh, flavor profile. And I think um, being able to cut those 500,000 slow balls is just like, it's like a drug dealer. You're going to start out with a pure product and then you're going to start stepping it down depending on your audience. So we want to introduce them to the habanero and then slowly scale them up with each of the different products. Um, with it, we want to diversify into not only the sauces, but just selling the, um, the dried peppers. Um, there's a local farm uh, just starting up. They're up in paradise. Very, I apologize. But I just talked to him the other day over we'll having sushi, just having a conversation, and there's a new pepper farm coming up in Paradise. You should talk to Aaron. Convince him to grow. Yeah. Uh, sometimes doing the contract grow, you can find a lot of people that will grow for you, but since there isn't a processing facility here, it's hard to take those peppers, bring them into a facility, turn them into puree, and then um, freeze them so you can use them for later. At least to have that much volume. You have a contract girl, you're going to have all around here maybe hundreds of pounds. But still, that's a lot of work to, to bring in the process in the kitchen. And that's where a small kitchen that's just going to open up from 10 at night to 4 in the morning trying to process that much stuff it just isn't going to happen. It's not easy. So trying to find uh, habanero purees, which I found a few across the United States, is very very hard to find So I'm just glad that I found a local person that's going to start uh, growing and drawing, which hopefully they'll have the processing facility. But I can just contract grow with them. They can do a process and hold on to it slide. So the first batches we're probably just going to do in a local kitchen and just sell out of quart jars. Um, nothing fancy on it, just to get the recipes uh, dialed in. Um, past production run, we use facilities. So the recipes are already scaled, but um, 
make them with local fresh ingredients is going to give a little bit of a flavor a lot of change. Because uh, you have different consistencies with moisture, sugars, um, and that's where the food science from Chico State is going to come in and help try to balance those recipes out. Yes. What's your production volume? Working out of a small kitchen, production volume would probably be no more than 20 gallons in a single day to produce. It's, it's probably a whole day event to um, break everything down, uh, prep it, simmer it, bring it to temperature, uh, then fill and make sure everything's sealed, and then label. So, yeah, 25, uh, 25 gallons or so probably the max. Uh, once you go into a production facility, then it changes. Then you're doing like thousand pound batches, and you can usually get about 225 cases of five ounce bottles. So, totally different, uh, totally different looking at it. So, you do thousand pound batches, all of a sudden you have all that heat in the mass, and you fill up the boxes and sit, so it starts cooking by itself. So, some of that food science has to come into play while you're creating the rest of this. So that's what I'll put back in the room. Yes? Who's your target audience now? I know in the past we speak for the store. My target market now, I just want to stay small. Just keep it uh, under control. I don't want to be my own supplier. Uh, going to the stores and stocking the shelves and doing all the trade shows and doing the fancy food. Um, it's a lot of work or not a lot of pay. So mainly, my focus now is going to be uh, just the local farmers markets, a few choice restaurants, which I've talked to about them, just distributing out of their restaurants instead of the stores. So one, it brings customers into their restaurants, they can create some recipes with it, and then they're selling right out of the restaurant. So that way, it's kind of a win-win. If I can use their kitchen, and then they promote it, that's even better. So I've talked to a couple of places that are, are open to do that. That would be nice. Plus, they have a facility to store in case the injury break or anything. My, my production runs for the Coke Pack facility are pH shelf stable. So they have two year best life, but I have items that are nine years old that are still, uh, still edible. Uh, colors, colors change because of oxidation and time. But since it's a shelf stable, uh, the sugars and the slight vinegar we use, and the, most of the sugars keeps everything nice. As long as you don't keep them out in the sun and do your barbecue and then go back two days later. Okay. You have to be reasonable. Hmm. Anybody else? I like the preppers market. Okay. It's the shelf, the extended shelf. And hopefully, <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go into the farmers markets locally. Uh, because they're certified, they also want to know that you make your own products. So outsourcing in the past, even though you go to the facility, you go to the pantry, you create the recipe, you provide all of the labels and the insurance and the items, all the thing you're not doing is stirring the spoon and filling the bottles. Um, but since you're not doing that, they're not, uh, they say you don't have enough control over your product. Although you get sued, you can do it. So I wasn't allowed to sell at the farmer's market, it was a commercial farm. So now making just small batches locally, I can just go to the farmer's market and just follow on that. I just like to make a nice little living on it. And if somebody would like to partner and do the licensing and do the distribution, I'm more than willing to do that. What about like, like bringing it, your product to places like Made in Chico? Um, Made in Chico, I'm sure would pick up the product. That's pretty easy. As long as it's in town, I think I can do the distribution, but still it gets pretty busy. And there's only so much time in the day, but um, small stores be easy. I don't want to downplay it, but uh, I love making the product, I love cooking, I love talking about it, and I love the passion uh, that people talk about it when they tell me about the product and the food. Uh, but until there's enough funding or enough uh, contacts to do the distribution, know what I'm capable of and what I'm not capable of. Uh, going to small shows, doing local deliveries, 
and keeping it small is what I know I can handle. And that the dollars will turn just enough to keep itself going and put a few in my pocket. Once you start going to the co-packers, all of a sudden the production runs turn into ten to fifteen thousand dollars a run. New stores want new product. You already have old product on the floor. You have a timetable because you have a two-year best buy and it starts ticking away on that product. So if you do go to a Safeway, they say, oh, we want to do 10 stores, but we want brand new product. Well, I got $8,000 sitting in the warehouse ready to go, but it's not new. So I don't have another $15,000. All of a sudden, the scalability, which is, you need cash flow for those. So I know just doing small production runs when we need them is a little more uh, manageable for myself. So that's where if someone does pick it up and they'd like to just run with it and run with the label and the name and the recipes, I'll be called them to do that. Because nickels add up. <laughs> they can do the work and I'll just like nickels. <laughs> Have you got any luck with the websites? Uh, like, you, I noticed you have a Wix uh, website. Um, the website, the, the decision to oh, do this just happened like yesterday. Okay. The night before I had like two phone calls, one from Michigan and one from down in San Jose from customers who were looking for a product. So we are out of product, we don't have anything. So I like to just rebrand, start over see where that goes. So coming up with the name, purchasing the websites, uh, the domains, creating the slideshow, the labels, the Facebook page, that all happened since yesterday afternoon. So it's something that I want to do. It's something that my customers and the local public want. So I put up uh, on the Facebook page, if you like it, you're on the waiting list for the first production run. You know, probably start a little Kickstarter type fundraising page. So once we get to a certain point, then I can run it. Thank you.